Hello and welcome to the Winnipeg Foundation's 2022 Legacy Circle Celebration. This year we're partnering with the Bruce Oak Recovery Centre to highlight the important work that they are doing in our community. Today's program will include hearing from Scott and Darcy Oak as well as CEO Greg Kylo and one of the graduates from the program. We aim to entertain, inform and inspire at our program today. But before we get any further, I want to welcome Elder Belinda Vandenbroek to greet and open in a good way. Belinda. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Sky. Um, my name is Belinda Vandenbroek. I'm a McGillivray from the OCN Territory in the Palm, Manitoba. And I welcome everyone to Treaty One Territory here today. And I'm uh, very proud to be a part of this Legacy Circle celebration and to be able to speak on a subject that is near and dear to my heart uh, because it has affected me and all my family members over the years. And I'm very grateful that uh, that I'm was able to be a part of speaking on addictions. Thank you very much for the invitation, Sky. For people who are addicted, and I am one of them, I have been sober for 47 years now. And at the time that I was uh, asked uh, to go to an AE meeting, I wasn't going there because I wanted to stop drinking. I went there because my best friend invited me and, and she actually saved my life. And I'm glad they said, keep coming back. And I did. And so I, and, and I began to do what they told me to do in, in the big book. I am a mother of addicted children who are now adults. It is one of the hardest things as a mother to witness and know that you have no control over them. To, of course, as a mother, you, you want to take care of them and you want to do whatever you can to help. But the desire to, to do something about it has to come from the individual. We can't do it for them. Uh, no one can do it for, for anyone. So centers like Bruce Oak and any program, any land-based program even uh, that could go out on the land and help people who are recovering. I'd like to uh, thank everyone that's been a part of this Legacy uh, Circle Celebrations. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful initiative. And to have been part of it has been an honor for me and I'm grateful that I was invited. And so I, um, I hope everyone had a wonderful time and that you were able to take away something that is important for you and the people that you serve. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Belinda, for your wisdom and your inspiration. It is always a gift to hear from you. Next, I want to introduce Scott Oak. If you don't know the Oaks or their story, that's all about to change. Scott's son, Bruce, is the inspiration of this whole center. And we're gonna hear about this story shortly. But first, I wanna welcome Scott Oak to the program to say a few words. Thank you, Sky. Much appreciated. I'm Scott Oak, and I am in the family room of the Bruce Oak Recovery Center, and it's wonderful to be part of this Legacy Circle celebration. Hi, Bruce. Hey, Dad. Turn around. Are you kidding? <laughs> he was uh, diagnosed uh, around about the age of eight or so with ADHD. And he was also diagnosed with a mild case of Tourette, so he was getting help for that as well. So he always felt like he was sort of different than everybody else. There's Bruce. Hey, By the time he got to high school, he was kind of like the life of the party. He sort of coveted that, uh, that dangerous lifestyle until it got real come to the realization of how how much of a hold addiction had over him. I guess his girlfriend came in the bathroom and found him shooting up and he had taken a bit too much. He was on a heavy nod. 
and she called 911. I guess the ambulance showed up. He refused to get in the ambulance or something like this, and they left, but she wouldn't let him back in the house. He went to Tipperary's pub just up the street. Obviously, he took a last hit, and that was the one that was clearly too much. Two police officers walked in and a third person with a black jacket on. Then they went really silent and they said, Terry Mr. Oak's dead. <laughs> and they asked me if I could come identify the body and if I knew how to get a hold of his parents. When I called him, I said, Scott, there's, there's no easy way for me to say this, but Bruce is, was found in Calgary, uh, deceased. And I could hear Ann in the background just scream. Um, and um, it wasn't fun making that call. One of the reasons that Scott approached us was he wasn't interested, or Anne or Darcy, they weren't interested in doing anything half measured. You need to have the right culture. And uh, so he was looking to us to uh, help build that culture in Winnipeg. God love the Oaks, we're so honored to be here. And this idea that Anne and Scott and Darcy have is clearly a, a lighthouse idea. This is so important. Not just a, a one-off for Bruce, uh, but a, a really important idea for the country and uh, beyond. Try as we did, try as he did, the life of our son Bruce could not be saved, but other lives will be saved at the Bruce Oak Recovery Center. Thank you all uh, for sharing your afternoon with us. My name is Ace Burpee. I'm one of the uh, Capital Campaign uh, co-chairs, and it's an honor to be here today. We really, really appreciate you all um, coming out tonight for the official grand opening. What he taught me about life and just who he was helped me be better. And I think this recovery center will hopefully save and help people so they do get the second chance that he might not have gotten. Those moments pop up frequently where it's like, ah, oh, I just wish, wish I could call him right now. We would give anything we would give everything we have to have another day with him. But that's not going to happen and so we, we have we to do try the best to, we can. yeah, and we t want to save somebody else's yeah. life if we can. So. And give meaning to his life and uh, try to help ensure that what happened to him doesn't happen to, to somebody else. I had uh, alcohol induced seizures, so Bruce Oak just kind of had all these, uh, these qualities that kind of stood out to me. Oh, it was phenomenal. It was great. Um, yeah, food's amazing. People here are amazing, like everybody's in, you know, long-term sobriety, so, you know, they actually understand what you're going through, which is huge. It's like that peer support. I got messages, you know, congratulations from all my family and some of my friends even, you know, saying like, well done, you, you graduated the program, you put in the work. She was diagnosed with a, an autoimmune liver disease and her liver was failing and she had to be ventilated. It was supposed to be for a couple of days and ended up being over a week. Um, they uh, 
took the tube out, extubated it, and uh, we, we had a lot of hope that day. That was, was one of the, uh, that was one of the greatest days of my life. I thought the tube's out, and now we can get on track and get her to Toronto. And uh, went home that day, and they called back that night to say that she's struggling again. Clearly couldn't speak with a tube in her throat, so that's when we took off on the, the idea of her writing notes on a clipboard, paper on a clipboard. And the first thing she wrote when she woke up the day was, let me go. That was tough. And she died. Um, it, was, it was a shock. And with all the pain that I'm feeling now, I wouldn't give up a second of those years with her. presenting a plaque in memory of Anne, my mother, who uh, is the founder of this whole place. So uh, yeah, it's a big day. It's great. It's a celebration for sure. Oh, there we go. Fish of my flesh, pride of my flesh. I have to single out Bonnie and John Bueller, uh, who were who knew Anne well and were first to the table as our major donors to give us the initial hope that the Bruce Oak Recovery Centre could become a reality and that Anne's dream could be realized. She and Bruce forever will live on through the recovery of, of, of those men. She lived long enough to see her dream come true. She was around here when the building was complete. She met the first few participants and she she knew how much this place meant to, to them and, and to their family, so uh, we, we, we settle for that because, because basically we, we have no choice. And, but it's good to know that she will, she will be remembered here forever. I'm really thrilled with how things have gone in the first year uh, and uh, one of the reasons for how successfully this place has been running is I have nothing to do with it. I did paint that family wall right there, in the, uh, the wall in the family room. That's about all I've done. I like to think that that place, that wall is holding the whole place up. <laughs> but uh, no, th it, it's just been beautiful here. It's exceeded our wildest dreams. We always thought when this place you know, was being built that, uh, you know, it would be successful. Uh, but it's, it, it's working probably better than even we thought it could. So uh, we've been blessed here, completely and totally blessed. As for, uh, you know, personal legacy, I don't think about it. I just think about um, the need to keep this place running as smoothly as it has been. And, and, and that's our goal. I'm sure it's the same for Darcy and for everyone else involved in, in this project. I just, we wanted to do something to make Bruce's life mean something to help ensure that what happened to him didn't have to happen to somebody else and to this point we've succeeded. But we, as I said, at our grand opening um, just over a year ago, uh, it was August 22nd of, uh, of, of 21, uh, this is not the finish line. The place is built and it's an operation, but it's not the finish line, it's the start line, the point at which we can begin saving lives. And we've done that up to a number of almost 100 now, 
There's going to be thousands more, thousands more as time goes on here. There was a tendency when we started uh, for people to accept the acronym Bruce Oak Recovery Center, B-O-R-C. And so it was, was being referred to as Bork a lot. And Ann and I asked um, everyone who was involved in the project if they could please refrain from that and, and call it Bruce Oak. Uh, as in, I went to Bruce Oak to get sober. Because if you constantly uh, invoke the word or the acronym Bork, Bruce's name would soon be lost and we didn't want that to happen. And everyone's respected that. And so now I hear the guys coming in here saying, I'm at Bruce Oak, or I hear them on the phone, hey, I'm doing well at Bruce Oak. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. That means that Bruce's name will, will live forever. I'd like to thank everyone for having us as part of the Legacy Circle celebration. And now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, one of the best illusionists in the world, who as a kid had a great trick. Uh, it involved making our money disappear, but those days are over. Um, we will hear now from Darcy Oak. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Darcy Oak. My uh, love and support and appreciation for all of the Legacy Circle members watching this right now. We're here at the Bruce Oak Recovery Center in the family room, which is the room in the center where the families can come and gather and hang out with their kids and spend some time. Uh, this room was actually decorated by my mom uh, with her plaque in memory of right there. And uh, this center, this room in itself is the embodiment of family. Um, so thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. I think in general, legacy is the impression you've left on people after you're gone. And um, I think the center is the embodiment of that. Bruce's legacy um, has become about helping people. And when somebody dies from a drug overdose, at the time, it's very difficult to find meaning in that person's life. Um, but at, when Bruce was at his cleanest, um, he actively wanted to help people and he sort of became this mentor for people in the recovery center that he was in and I remember him and I having conversations about um, him potentially becoming like a counselor or, or something of that sort so I think he would be um, just absolutely thrilled with what we've done here in his name um, and a gentleman said it at one of the grads here a couple of months ago where uh, it really struck a chord with me was the amount that his name is said now these days because a lot of times too when somebody dies or passes away there's this weird sort of dynamic where people don't know if they should bring it up or, or mention that person because they don't want to upset anyone and for us it was always talking about him talking about the story talking about um, what we're trying to do here in his name that was therapeutic to us as a family we didn't want to sort of just hide behind what happened we don't talk about it we don't mention it but uh, the amount that his name is spoken now is something that is, it's beautiful and it means the world to us and the fact that this building is standing here now in his name, helping people, saving lives, it's, uh, it's amazing. Hello, my name is Tom Brick and I'm honored to be the chair of the board of directors of the Winnipeg Foundation. I'm so pleased you're able to join us here today as we celebrate the Legacy Circle and your collective generosity. As Canada's first community foundation, we were able to respond to the unique needs of our community caused by the COVID pandemic. This is only possible because of the many years our donors have supported us, and none more so than our Legacy Circle members. Thank you so much for the trust you place in the Winnipeg Foundation. Unfortunately, COVID has heightened some of the challenges that we have in our community, including those around mental health, addictions, and recovery. One of the newer agencies doing tremendous work in this area is the Bruce Oak Recovery Center. And I know you've already seen a little bit about the work that they've done. It's now my pleasure and my honor to introduce Greg Kylo, the Executive Director of the Bruce Oak Recovery Center, who will tell you more about the tremendous work they are doing. Over to you, Greg. Thank you, Tom. 
Hello, Legacy Circle members. Bruce Oak is so happy to be part of the 2022 Legacy Circle celebration. Uh, we have actually loved uh, hosting the Winnipeg Foundation, Sky and Megan. Uh, it's been great to have you here at the Bruce Oak Recovery Center. Uh, we're grateful to be a part of this really important event. This past year at Bruce Oak, as you've seen a little bit about our journey and what brought us here, has been, it's been a lot, to be honest. Uh, the first year of operations in, in any uh, new organization is, uh, uh, can be daunting. Uh, to start your organization uh, in the middle of a pandemic uh, adds an extra layer. And to be honest, it's been, uh, it's been a lot as an organization sort of hiring 25 staff members and bringing on uh, up to 50 uh, participants uh, within our, our center here, uh, all coming together over the past year has been definitely a journey. And uh, I'm very proud to say that we were able to uh, not have an outbreak in our first year of the pandemic, which was one of our key goals. So that really helped us all to stay safe, um, to support each other and to, to focus on our recovery versus worrying about uh, a virus uh, that was within the facility. So, so grateful for that and achieving that in our first year. I'll uh, put that on my, uh, <laughs> on my outcome measures for sure. Um, but it's been, uh, it's been a really beautiful journey. It's been because of support of the community, of uh, members like yourself and others within the Winnipeg community that we've been able to have a, a really successful first year. We're seeing lives transformed here. Um, I'm going to share with you uh, in a second a little bit about one of our participants and, and his journey, but uh, the community that we've been able to build here uh, at the Bruce Oak Recovery Center has, has really been, I think what we're hearing is a success story uh, in Winnipeg over the past couple of years. And uh, we're grateful for, I think, what's really been challenging in, in not just in Winnipeg or in Manitoba or in Canada, but worldwide is this epidemic. Uh, of addiction that uh, that a lot of people are losing hope around and not seeing uh, people be able to to deal with it in a way that doesn't lead to to overdoses and we're all acutely aware of 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 what's been happening in the news well that is changing here at the Bruce Oak Recovery Center we have been able to successfully treat and help people to return to wellness and well-being, return to their families, get their kids back, get really meaningful long-term employment, uh, get housing back, all these really important things that are, um, I think, key to both well-being and to living rich, fulfilling lives in Winnipeg are happening as a result of our 16-week treatment center program that uh, individuals come and live here at Bruce Oak for four months and transform their lives. And so we've been able to, to see that happen. And I, I'm looking outside right now and uh, there's in, um, participants out uh, playing sports and being in community. We've got a, a sweat lodge and cultural programming that's going on here because of the support of the Winnipeg Foundation. And uh, we're just incredibly grateful to be able to do all the things that, that we do here on a daily basis to, uh, to help people turn their lives around. And, uh, um, but the work is only just beginning. We're in our first, we've had our first year of operations now and, and now we're looking forward. Currently, uh, we support uh, those uh, male identified non-binary individuals. So we're a men's treatment center, um, but we need to do more to support the women in our community. And so we're hopeful that um, one day we'll be able to do that through um, a treatment center for women. Uh, we know that the evidence is clear that better health outcomes come when you're supporting gender specific uh, treatment facilities and residences and so we're we're working towards having uh, another treatment center that can support women. Uh, we're currently working with Tamarack, one of our community partners, uh, in supporting women through that center. But, uh, but it's uh, hopeful that an, perhaps an Anne Oak recovery center might be possible one day in the future because of support uh, like those of the Legacy Circle and others um, in the community to, to make recovery possible for everyone. Uh, in Winnipeg and so recovery isn't just possible when we come together like we are here in a model like we have at Bruce Oak recovery is probable and turning people's lives around is happening right here in our community so thank you we look forward to uh, to doing more good work and uh, appreciate all the success uh, now hear a little bit more about uh, the journey and story of one of our participants
took a long time to realize that I had a problem with addiction. Um, but I guess the first, the first time would have been in the age of 15, to be honest. I was, that's when, that's when it was apparent to my, my parents anyways. Um, so then, you know, and friends as well, right? My friendship circle was changing. The first time I, I entered into, uh, into recovery meetings, I would have been 18 years old. And that would have been my first introduction with, uh, with hard drugs. You know, my relationship, I had a, a girlfriend of three and a half years and it was, uh, it was a toxic relationship, uh, mainly fueled by, by my drug use. You know, I had a few years of partial sobriety from hard drugs um, in my, from ages 21, somewhere in between 21 and 26. Uh, and then, and then, then, it, then it started to pick up again. Uh, that's when I became uh, a journeyman, Red Seal construction electrician. I had bought my first home. I was in charge of running work projects. Uh, so then that's when my addiction uh, started again. I was unable to, to deal with the stress uh, that came with the job, uh, the stress of home life, owning, owning a home, uh, all that sort of, all those kinds of things kind of, you know, it added fuel to the fire, right? Moving forward to the age of 30 uh, is really when my drug use it really started to impact and make my life completely unmanageable and I felt extremely you know, powerless to my addiction where it affected my work life, uh, my family life, uh, home life, you name it, every aspect, my finances, uh, everything had, had, was impacted by my drug use at that time. Uh, that was the introduction uh, to, my, to my son in 2017. Uh, my son was born and, and that at that point, I can't remember if I had come clean to my family that I was struggling or if it was prior to the birth of my son, but, uh, but the, the, the cat was out of the bag per se, right? Um, and so it, it uh, but again, it took me many years still to kind of get the, the help that I needed. Uh, you know, my first time in treatment was in 20, the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020. Um, I entered a 78 day treatment program uh, so I would say, I think it was July of August of 2020, I had a, had a relapse. I had pushed my family, my son and his mom out of the house that we were living in, our home. And I forced them out uh, in the end, in beginning of August of 2020, they left the house and went and she went and lived with her, her mother. Um, and I continued, you know, it, that further enabled me in my drug use and I continued to use in the house that I had no right being in. Uh, because I was just I was so selfish and stubborn that I wasn't I wouldn't leave the home that was rightfully theirs you know to live in and, and instead it, it you know with them leaving it enabled me to continue using and I used in, until November uh, and then finally gained some courage by the end of November to leave the house or middle November sometime in there to leave the house and let them re-enter the home uh, I had I had uh, become homeless at that time. I had lived with my mother for a bit. Uh, ultimately, I think I remember I went to my mother's and I think I lasted anywhere from one day to five days. I let, would leave and then I would go back and I, you know, back and forth, um, you know, kind of making a revolving door of her house, right? And, and then eventually I just, I stayed away. You know, I had continued to use uh, I was homeless, uh, living in my vehicle, um, and then and then you know harassing my son and his mother throughout this time, which was which was extremely painful for them, extreme, extremely painful for for my family, her family. Uh, you know, numerous family members had attempted to reach out to me to try to get me to stop. Um, ultimately. Uh, you know, I really wanted nothing to do with anybody. I just wanted to keep my addiction alive and do whatever it was, you know, stealing food, um, manipulating family and friends to get money, uh, whatever it was that I could do to keep my addiction alive. And then I entered into a sober living facility um, and I was there until, again, July and August, last week of July, August, and that's when I had relapsed again and was homeless again. And, uh, and then during that time, you know, bouncing around, living in 
living on people's couches, living in my vehicle again, living in hotels, doing whatever it was that I could, what I, whatever it was I could do to keep my addiction alive. Uh, and during that time when I was in the 28 day treatment program, uh, my son's mother and I were working together to sell the house or the home that we had built together um, to get it on the market to make, you know, so that we could part ways, if you will. Uh, and, you know, during that time we had uh, finalized a separation agreement. That's when I later had relapsed in that summer. Uh, so come, come summer, I had all this money from the sale of the house, which I proceeded to spend, uh, you know, all of it on my addiction. Um, you know, I've gone through my, my retirement savings. I've gone through, I went through the joint accounts that my son's mother and I had together. I went through some of her savings. I went through the money through the sale of the house. So I've, you know, I've dumped a lot of money into my addiction and, and it left me, you know, broke, homeless, frightened, alone. Uh, all those things, you know, that it, uh, that it can take you to in dark places. At uh, one time I was suicidal, uh, committed, tried to commit suicide. Thankfully, you know, uh, it didn't, didn't pan out and I'm sitting here today able to tell my story, right? There was a, a caseworker in, in, in the, the detox center, Isabel was her name. Great, great lady, nice lady. And she, you know, she saw something in me that maybe I didn't see in myself. Uh, and she reached out to Bruce Oak Recovery Center uh, and, and spoke on my behalf to, to see if there was a, an opening at the, at the treatment center, if they could have a bed for someone. Uh, you know, I, so I, was, I entered here on December 7th. I was in program for three months. And then I completed the Bruce Oak Recovery Center on March 2nd of 2022, uh, where I, you know, continued to stay for another three months while I tried to find suitable housing. And, uh, and then by the end of May of this year, uh, Bruce Oak approached me and, and, and gave me the privilege to move to their sober, their transitional sober housing, uh, where I currently reside today and uh, you know if it wasn't for for the treatment center and, and the great programming offered here and, and the work that I put in ultimately you know I had to put in the work to get my recovery to get into that sober house to complete the treatment center um, I've had to put in a lot of work I've faced a lot of challenges so I've uh, I've been able to do some great things do some volunteer work uh, th with Bruce Oak Recovery Center, they have a, a wonderful vegetable garden that I participate in. We've been able to provide food here uh, for the center to, to use in their meals that they, they, uh, they cook for us. Uh, you know, Bruce Oak has done some amazing things and, and because of the work and the programming and the staff support and everything here in the center, I was able to be there on my son's fifth birthday in order to support him. And, uh, and going forward, uh, you know, I was able to uh, accomplish a life goal and a recovery goal of mine, which was to re-enter the workforce. And, uh, and on September 6th, I should be joining Manitoba Hydro as a, as a power electrician. My stay with three months in program and another three months after program to stay connected and inside the recovery center uh, has definitely benefited my, my recovery, uh, you know, and on August 30th, I'll be eight months sober. Tonight, I stand before you beaming with courage, confidence, and proudly dedicated to my recovery, working hard one day at a time with hope that my name will be raised in the rafters at Bruce Oak on the back of a, of a Winnipeg Jets hockey jersey alongside my fellows in celebration of my one year of sobriety. Couldn't have done any of that without the great programming here at Bruce Oak Recovery Center and all the support, family, friends, you know, you name it, right? So uh, I, owe, I owe a lot and I, and I give back as, as much as I can because um, it's, uh, it's made a huge impact and it's been able to give me my life back. Wow, what a story. And 
even more inspiring is knowing that there are many more stories just like that happening because of the Bruce Oak Recovery Centre. My name is Mary Beth Taylor and I'm the Director of Donor Engagement for the Winnipeg Foundation and it's my pleasure again to welcome you here today. I have the honour to reintroduce you to someone that you've already met in the program, Darcy Oak. Darcy has already generously shared his journey with his brother Bruce, but what you may not know about Darcy is that he is also an international star. Darcy is a magician, an illusionist, a performance artist, and today he is sharing his journey with Britain's Got Talent. So please enjoy. champions where 10 acts are all determined to leave here as our ultimate winner. Next up tonight is an international man of mystery and illusion. But who is he? What is he? And why is he here? Well, he's Darcy Oak. He's a magician and he got the most votes. Thanks for clearing that up. It's Darcy Oak. Okay. I'm Darcy Oak and I'm a magician. I did Britain's Got Talent in 2014 and I was the first magician to ever make the finals. Waiting to go on stage for the semifinal, I was feeling every emotion any human could. You are the ultimate showman. Darcy oh! I don't even know how to explain how I feel right now. I'm excited, exhilarated, thankful. This is unreal. Tonight is such an important night for me because I'm sharing a huge part of my life that shaped a lot of who I am as a person. Britain's Got Talent is hands down the toughest, most fierce competition I've ever entered. This is the biggest moment of my life. I'm gonna go out there and leave it all on that stage. I want nothing more than to take that championship home. If you could go back in time and relive a single moment of your life, what would that moment be? I grew up with an older brother until I was 23 years old. He was my hero. He was charming, charismatic, the life of the party. He was everything I wanted to be like. He's everything I still want to be like. He was everything an older brother should be. His name was Bruce. <laughs> you guys would have loved him. You could classify our sense of humor as immature. We used to do this thing where we'd be walking around town, he'd reach down, he'd grab my hand, and we'd literally walk around town holding hands. We did this well into our 20s. We told each other it was just a joke, but I know deep down to both of us it meant so much more than that. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. If that's the case, then this one is worth a million to me. On March 28th, 2011, at 7 a.m., I got a phone call from my mom, and it's one that replays in my head daily. She didn't have to say a word. I picked up the phone, and I already knew. Bruce was gone. <laughs> Losing someone you love is like living with a brick in your pocket. The weight never goes away. You just get used to carrying it around. In the eight years since he's passed, I've learned that it's not whether the glass is half full or half empty. It's being thankful that there's even water in it at all. If I could turn back time and go back to when we were kids.
It would be that one. Thank you. very emotional how was it for you very emotional I didn't want to come on here and use this opportunity use this platform to try to say something like look how great I am or anything like that I wanted to use it to say something meaningful and something that can hopefully inspire other people and I'm so so happy to have had this platform to share his story and keep his name alive very you, must, you must miss him terribly but what a wonderful tribute to him tonight thank you so much ladies and gentlemen let's hear it one more time for the fantastic Darcy O. Oh my God, we've seen some stuff tonight. Yeah. We've never ever seen it. I know. Wow, what a show. Thanks to Darcy for sharing your talents with us and with the world. And thanks to all of you for joining us for our Legacy Circle celebration. As the Director of Community Grants at the Winnipeg Foundation, I'm always so grateful to our donors whose gifts and legacies make our work possible and allow us to support organizations like the Bruce Oak Recovery Centre. We also hope that you're enjoying the treats that we've had delivered for you today. They've been prepared with care by Diversity Foods, which is a local social enterprise uh, right here in Winnipeg that focuses on sustainable food production, local ingredients, and competitive wages and benefits for their employees. Here's a little bit more about Diversity Food Services and what they do. I am Jessica Young, and I am the executive chef with Diversity Food Services and Spruce Catering. I have a saying that I like to say quite a bit, um, and it's be the person you pretend to be. I think that often we get caught up in trying to portray something, especially as leaders, you know, we want people to believe in us and trust us and, you know, work well for us. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, I really need to live up to the person that I say that I'm being. Relationships are everything. So our chef, whom you met earlier, uh, executive chef Jessica, she has relationships with 60, 70, up to 80 suppliers, whereas your typical food service outlet of our size would typically have less than five, right? And so they, they would typically have five broad lines, uh, whereas we deal directly with farmers who farm one product or two products and, and bring those to us. You know, I have one supplier for Saskatoons, I have one supplier for Quinoa, his name is Percy, I met him at the farmer's market. Um, I have, you know, one supplier for pierogies, him and his wife, uh, are the people that come and deliver those. Jonathan is who I get my beef from, his mother drops it off. Um, again, building relationships through other chefs, people who are coming to us. Um, we were approached at, from a woman that is doing a urban garden and all she has grown is green onions, so I bought all of her green onions. I think that's very different, it's a little bit harder to manage from our end of things. Uh, but it's, it's again, we're, the idea of where we are and who we are is to be participating in the community and if we're not supporting the people who are producing in the community, then I don't think we're doing our job. Our owners say to us, be good employers, be socially, culturally, economically and environmentally sustainable, be local, fresh and delicious, uh, which means that our food can be cooked from scratch here on site by people who are coming from equity seeking groups and we can provide good jobs in a supportive environment, purchasing local food, local ingredients, using all local small businesses and make food that is good for people to, to power themselves on and, and have good home cooked real food. So I've been in recovery for eight years. I would say that the, the industry in itself has uh, not been a very uh, conducive environment to uh, something like sobriety. Um, but at the end of the day, I think all humans want to be seen and to be contributing 
to society and to their community. So I think, I think it all integrates very much together. I know that I can offer food and I know that I can offer relationships. So if I can offer those two things together, um, I think that can provide uh, a really great place for somebody to start, um, to build confidence and again to participate, to participate in society um, in a more of a sustainable way. And I think that goes hand in hand with recovery. If you don't feel like you're part of your community and you don't feel like you can take care of yourself, um, I, I don't think that you're going to have a very good base to be able to go anywhere. So um, yeah, I think it kind of all just starts there. Well, we've reached the end of our time together. Thank you so much for tuning in to the 2022 Legacy Circle Celebration. I'm Sky Bridges, and on behalf of everyone here at the Bruce Oak Recovery Center and all the staff at the Winnipeg Foundation, thank you. Here at the Foundation, we are all about the good forever, which is only possible thanks to you. So take care of yourselves and each other. Miigwech, and we'll see you again.